Now, how about uh, Margaret Thatcher running Bristol, or even Winston Churchill? The BBC has been asking Bristolians to pick someone, alive or dead, who they think could transform the city. Charlotte Callan reports on the outcome of the survey. This is more than just a ship. This is one of the greatest feats of engineering for more than a generation. Isambard Kingdom Brunel is still seen as one of Britain's greatest leaders more than 150 years after his death. That when I waked, I cried to dream again. He's still centre stage, even at this year's Olympic Games. Isambard Kingdom Brunel was a great visionary, and he was flawed in many ways uh, as a leader. Uh, he was very arrogant, and he rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. But he was a great visionary, and being a great visionary as a leader is a good thing. So I think the candidate for, for Bristol, or whoever is elected now, needs to have some of that, I think. Brunel needed a will of iron to get this propeller from the drawing board actually onto his ship. And that's a leadership quality shown by many. Just think of the Iron Lady. To some, she's still the finest leader ever. To those waiting with bated breath for that favourite media catchphrase, the U-turn, I have only one thing to say. You turn if you want to. <laughs> but being strong can mean you being liked and disliked in equal measure. The ladies not for turning. <laughs> Does a truly visionary political leader also need to be able to steer a new political path? Well, one man with a very unique style of leadership also shared the stage with Brunel at this year's Olympic Games. For the first time in living memory, you caused tube train passengers to break into spontaneous conversation. Boris brings the human aspects to politics and people like him for that. I don't think people really want him to be the Prime Minister, although David Cameron's kind of worried that his, his, his star is rising, Boris Johnson. But he, he brings the human aspect out of it. He's a little bit of a buffoon, but people like that because I think he brings the human aspects about it. He, he makes mistakes and he owns up to them. Brunel is better known for what he made than for what he said. But for others, it's all about having great visionary speeches. If the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. So what should the candidates learn from the other great leaders? Well, they need to deliver on their promises, to be honest, and to listen to the people that they're representing. The people are right. If you only take the time to ask them, you'll probably find out all the solutions to all the problems if you just ask the people and listen to them. It's unlikely that any of our mayoral hopefuls will build a ship like this, but with the hopes and dreams of many Bristolians resting on their shoulders, they've certainly got a lot to live up to. Yeah, I think she's right. I don't think they are going to be able to build a ship like the SS uh, Great Britain. John and Steve, though, are still with us. Um, what do you reckon makes a good leader, John? I, I think listening to, to the electorate, listening to voters, they are, after all, your employer, is a, is a very good start. But also having a vision. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to make sure that you listen and you lead. The point that the man on the film made is that the, uh, the, the audience or the people are always, always right. Is that your experience? Um, broadly, yes, absolutely. You know, the electors, the voters are the boss. Um, what you've got to do, though, is to make sure you are giving them all the information and framing the question um, so that they can make a choice. Mm. Um, and so you know, that often, quite a lot of the time, you get hundreds of different opinions and you've got to try and distill that down in a, in a democratic debate. And does Nick Clegg do that for the Lib Dems? One of the things Nick Clegg's very good at, I think, is sharing leadership, not the sense of, you know, the great I am and I'm the only person who can do anything. It is making the most of the talent that's around you. And whoever wins the Bristol mayor election will come in at a time when money's incredibly tight. And I think they'll be surrounded with people who are telling them things can't be done. And, and as a government minister, I love to sit with some civil servants who would yeah. go away and say, right, this is how it can be done. And I think leadership is about getting people around you who are looking to overcome barriers, not tell you all the reasons why things can't happen. If we look at the London elections, of course, uh, Ken had a big profile and Boris has got a huge profile. It's much more difficult for us, isn't it, to get to know the people who want to run Bristol? 
Yes, I mean, obviously some of the candidates have been councillors and so on, and so they're known. And I think once this role is in place, people will get to know that they will become a, a figure across the area and hopefully then can, can speak up for the whole West, not just the city of Bristol, because both of us are outside the city of Bristol and we want a voice, although we don't have a say in who it is, if someone can speak up for the West of England at Westminster and elsewhere, that will be a bonus. Okay. And I think people will, will grow into it. You'll, you'll find people with big characters will come forward now the role exists. Do you fancy it? Uh, not for me. OK. <laughs> well, time now to catch up on some of the other political stories making the headlines this week.